Every time Secretary of State Michael Pompeo opens his mouth, the Chinese people love their country even more. Two years ago, I made a video entitled The Truth About Michael Pompeo in China, and the video opened with that line. And here we are, two years later, and Michael Pompeo is spreading more lies and disinformation about China. Let's have some fun today and break down Michael Pompeo's recent video about China and help everybody understand the truth. But before we get started, I wanna thank today's video sponsor, Ground News. Many of you know that I recently moved back to the United States, and one of the things that I have noticed in this country is that the majority of people have very little faith in me how do I stay informed on today's most important events? I use Ground News, the world's first news comparison platform. The way it works is simple. Ground News compiles all of the top news stories into one place, and here is the amazing part it tells me exactly where the bias is in each article. For example, today's video is about Michael Pompeo, whom we know is on the far right of the political spectrum. But to be an informed citizen, I wanna hear from both sides. Let's take the situation in Ukraine, for example. I use Ground News every morning to read news articles and see exactly how the right, left, and middle are all reporting on the situation. Ground News has quickly become my number one resource for all world news, and it has significantly helped me in my job as a geopolitical YouTuber. If you wanna stay informed on the important global issues issues facing our world, simply go to ground.news slash Cyrus and sign up today. And now let's begin breaking down Pompeo's video. Welcome to the Hudson Institute's China Center. I'm Mike Pompeo, 70th U.S. Secretary of State and now chairman of the advisory board of the New Center. As you can imagine, there's a lot more job security in this gig than the one in my last one. And the coffee here is a lot better than it was at Foggy Bottom. 30 seconds into his video about China, Michael Pompeo takes a direct shot at Xi Jinping. Now, for those of you who might not know, many people have remarked that Xi Jinping looks very similar to the cartoon Winnie the Pooh. So by holding up a Winnie the Pooh coffee mug, Pompeo is basically setting the tone for this video. He wants his audience to understand that he has no respect for China's president or government, which is actually quite ironic considering the very next statement he makes. Our goal with these videos, pretty simple, to talk directly to the Chinese people about US China relations. Right here, Pompeo completely contradicts himself. He states that his goal is to talk to Chinese people about US China relations. But if your target audience is Chinese people, then why do you open up your dialogue by making fun of China's president? Honestly, it's quite immature. And if you think about it, it doesn't make any sense at all. Just imagine if this was the other way around. What would be the reaction if a Chinese government official made fun of America's president in a video and then stated his goal was to talk to American citizens about US and China relations? The reality is, is that no one in America would give this Chinese government official any time or respect, and that's exactly what has happened to Michael Pompeo in China. There's a reason we're doing this. The Chinese Communist Party doesn't represent the Chinese people. Now, this is the main point of Pompeo's entire message. His goal is to convince Chinese people that their own government doesn't represent them. Pompeo goes on to state, because all my interactions with the CCP leaders convince me that what the CCP truly cares about is maintaining their stranglehold over the Chinese people. Pompeo's opinion is that China's government is only concerned with one thing, and that is maintaining power. But I'll challenge that argument with simple logic, because that's not the government's biggest concern. And the reason for that is actually quite simple. China is a one-party state. They don't need to worry about maintaining control, because quite frankly, they have control, and there is no other party that will challenge it. This is by definition what a one-party state means. In fact, the opposite is true. In America, our politicians are more obsessed with maintaining control because they are in danger of losing power every four years. Simply look at the extremes that President Trump went through trying to keep his power. Trump undermined the very existence of America's democracy by declaring the 2020 election was a fraud and tried to invalidate the votes of American citizens. Trump even went as far as trying to force Mike Pence, his own vice president, to not certify the election results. Thankfully, Trump's plan didn't work and America's democracy survived. Well, at least for now. But guess who was one of the government officials that instantly lost his job and all of his subsequent power? Of course, that's Michael Pompeo. Pompeo. But Mike's lies about China only get worse. The CCP hates the United States because they're paranoid. Now, this statement is completely false. China's government does not hate the United States. China has had diplomatic relations with the U.S. for over 50 years. And in fact, if you know your history, you'll know that it was in fact Chairman Mao who first reached out to the United States for foreign aid to help China develop into a modern country. Go back to the last U.S. presidential election, and this is what China's government stated. We wish America the best with their upcoming presidential election. And whether Trump or Biden wins, we will respect and accept the outcome, and we look forward to building a new chapter in U.S. 
US-China relations. This is not the statement from a government that hates you. China's government does not hate America. China's government hates the United States government, telling China that in order to succeed, it must embrace the American-style democracy. Quite simply, the world is too unique and too diverse for only one form of government to exist. Blinded by his belief that America is exceptional in everything we do, this is how US government officials often make some of their biggest foreign policy mistakes, by failing to culturally understand their counterparts and thinking that America's way is the only way forward. The CCP hates the United States because they're paranoid. Paranoid that the Chinese people will be inspired by the example of American freedom the world's oldest and most influential democracy. Let's be honest here. China's government is not paranoid their citizens will be inspired by America's freedom and democracy. This is something that Michael Pompeo needs to understand. The average Chinese citizen knows considerably more about America than the average American knows about China. Chinese people consume American television, music, sports, and culture, and Chinese citizens are well aware of the freedoms that exist in America. If China's government was really concerned with its citizens leaving China and immigrating to America, then why would China allow its citizens to obtain 10-year multiple entry tourist visas? Why would China let its students leave, study, and immigrate to America? China's government could easily restrict its citizens from traveling to America, but the reality is, for the last 50 years, it hasn't. If the CCP represented the Chinese people, would hold a free and fair election tomorrow. But it won't. The so-called People's Republic seems to have a problem. Now, this is one of Pompeo's greatest mistakes in this video, and it shows just how little he knows about China. Just because China doesn't hold open and free elections like America doesn't mean that China's government is wrong. It simply means that China's government has a different system. Let's be honest, free and open elections are in theory a great thing. Everyone is equal and everyone has a chance to run for office. But in reality, free and open elections are glamorized popularity contests. Consider this, 46% of Americans said they would support a presidential run from Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Now, is the world's biggest movie star the ideal candidate for running the United States? Well, nearly half of America thinks so, but if you were to ask Chinese people, the overwhelming majority would think that question is a joke. How could a Hollywood actor be qualified to run for president? The truth is, as much as I like The Rock as an actor and a human being, I don't think he is qualified to run our country. And in China's system of government, one must prove themselves with over 30 years of hard work in order to rise and become the president of China. But allow me to offer you some real insights into how China's government works. Last year, I had the chance to do an interview with Brian Linden, an American who has lived in China for over 30 years. He shared exactly how China's government works and, in fact, how it does represent the people and actively listens to their requests. The way the government interacts with the local people, there's still the voices are being heard. They're just being heard in a slightly different way. I had a meeting with the government three or four days ago and every one of the participants in the, who came had to speak for 10 to 15 minutes. They had to share their views, positive or negative. And the local government official, who was a very high ranking official, sat there for three hours and took notes. He just sat there and wrote them down. And he asked questions after every one of them gave their talks. And this kind of attention is amazing because many of these people who share their feelings represented small communities within the within the prefecture. What I would like to say is that in some ways the voices are being heard and often what I get from the West is that the local the common people are not being heard and I don't think that is true. I spend most everyone I speak to just as Cyrus said politically they are fine because they have so many there's so much optimism and that whenever there's anything negative that is happening, they usually have a venue through which they can report to the next person up, and that person will report to the highest level to affect change. So it's not a perfect system, but it is not as negative as how the West portrays it as well. Now, if we really want to gain an insight into how China works and how the government functions, who are we going to trust? Michael Pompeo, a U.S. government official that has spent very little time in China, knows nothing about the Chinese language, culture, or history, or someone like Brian Linden, an American who has been on the ground in rural China for the past 30 years and spends every day of his life working with hundreds of local Chinese and living 
day in, day out in the local system in China. Now, as we close out today's video, I want you to realize that everybody has a goal on YouTube. Michael Pompeo's goal is to spread hate towards China for one simple reason. He is bitter that China sanctioned him along with 27 other Trump government officials. As a result of those sanctions, Pompeo is restricted from doing business in China, as are any companies associated with him. Now, this is actually a huge blow to Pompeo because as the former Secretary of State, I'm sure there would be plenty of American companies who would love to have him on their board of directors. But which American company is willing to sacrifice their entire business in China just to hire Michael Pompeo? The reality is not a single American company. And that's why Michael Pompeo is now the head of a new think tank that is spreading more anti-China rhetoric in America, which is actually sad because it's resulting in a weaker United States. As this article points out, American universities, which depend on international school tuition, will welcome fewer Chinese students this year. In addition, more highly trained Chinese scientists, all of whom are contributing to the American economy, are now leaving the United States due to the unprecedented rise in anti-China hate crime. As I mentioned, everyone on YouTube has a goal. And my goal with this channel has been consistent from day one. Use this platform as a way to foster a better relationship between the United States and China for one simple reason. The future of our world depends on it. Now, the goal of today's video is not to glorify China's government and say that it doesn't have any faults. There is no perfect government in the world, but it's time U.S. politicians stop blaming all of our problems on China. In closing, let me share with you how a real American patriot acts. This is Michael McFaul, the former U.S. ambassador to Russia, who states, America's greatest threat is not China, but ourselves. If we can get our own house in order, we'll be just fine. But of course, that's a big if. I hope one day Michael Pompeo can humble himself and start to improve America on the inside. But as we know with most far-right Republicans, humility is not one of their greatest assets, but it's a skill that they desperately need to learn. Everyone, thank you for spending time with me here on YouTube. Please take a moment and check out Ground News, by far the best platform to stay informed on today's important news stories. In addition, if this is your first video of mine that you've watched and you would like to support the channel, I have two ways that you can do that. The first is to join our Patreon community, and the second is to join our YouTube memberships. Both give you exclusive access to me and bonus content for you to enjoy. Everyone, my name is Cyrus Jansen. Thanks for spending time with me here today on YouTube, and I look forward to seeing you all in next week's video.